For brothers Nathan and Mike Abe, fishing isn't just another job, it's a lifelong passion. For me, it was, we started off fishing, I started fishing since I was second grade on the canoe and mostly net or pillow. And then we used to go on the canoe and then later on we fish on the boat, or pillow fishing. And then we would fish or pillow half day and then go bottom fishing the second half of the day because we get fresh bait now. Yeah. And then we used to give bait to, he used to give bait mostly to Haru. We'd fish two boats. We learned how to fish because my father was a commercial fisherman. So, you know, actually my grandfather fished also. So this is like the third generation. And like, we did what they call, I'm a netto pillow. And netto pillow is, is, is um, just like, even they call it aquaculture of the sea. And why they do that? Because, because you got to feed it every day, every, every day. So we had two canoes and one was at, um, at the King Cam Hotel and one was at the Honakaha Fishing Village. It, 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 it was a Filipino fishing village when, it, when there wasn't even the harbor there. And um, uh, actually, at the beginning, I didn't do too much bottom fishing because I was the, I used to run the, run the boat that caught, caught, caught the bait and you know, I did more hoop netting pillow. They're like, um, it's like a funnel and it's one inch mesh and you feed it and then when you get so much eating, you throw the net in the water and then you feed it and then you put the polo above the net and you just pull the net straight up, basically. Yeah. It's a technique though, you need to know the, the it's, like, it's like bottom fishing, but we get to see in the glass balls, we get to see how the fish reacts, how they eat, what the current is every day. And we yeah. go, I would say, we could do fishing back in those days. If there's 365 days in a year, we'd probably fish, I'd say 350 days or more in a year. Just mostly opelo, ahi, and bottom fishing. More, more opelo and, and ahi, yeah. yeah. Bottom fishing was just like um, when it was season or if the ahi price was cheap or if the ahi wasn't budding, then we'd go bottom fishing. Or if the current was slow, then we'd go bottom fishing. Yeah? Yep. Then, then we got a bigger boat, and, we, and then we had the smaller boat, and the bigger boat would catch bottom fish or, or ahi, and the smaller boat would catch opelo and give the bigger boat bait yep. every day. Like, I just stuck to bottom fishing and like inshore fishing, but my, you know, my brother went on to... I go offshore fishing now. He goes, he goes offshore fishing. Yeah. But I still do bottom fishing when it's slow or, you know, like this kind of projects with clay. Yeah. But he does it with a 65 foot boat. <laughs> and I do it with a 27 foot boat. And also like, you know, the boats, if it wasn't for my brother, because my brother is one of the best boat builders in, <laughs> he's, he's a really good, good boat builder. And he built my boat. He, he built two of my boats. He, he designed my last boat just for bottom fishing. I don't, I don't do I as much anymore. Not all the fish they catch goes to the market. I would say for me, 90% is sell. 10% is give away to my friends that we eat on the boat. How about you, Nick? About the same, because I give away a lot of fish. I mean, yeah. That's how I get all my favorites for anything else. Like, you know, it's like, it's all about bartering, you know, fix my road, you know, do, you know, things like that, you know. This is the key. You give somebody one onaga, they're going to remember you for life. I mean, you know, <laughs> I mean, you know, that's the whole part of fish, man. Everybody in Kona eats fish. Yeah. Actually, Kona is really hard to fit, um, you know, sell fish because Everybody gives them away, and there's a whole bunch of boats in Kona. Yeah, because the water's so flat. You know, like these, you see these people with 16-foot boats, and you know. 
I sell, I used to sell it to this guy named Glenn Ross, a, a, a marina seafood. And I, I always sold it to a broker because, you know, when I was younger, I would go, you know, every day. So you cannot, you know, I cannot like spend a day, you know, selling my fish. And then I also sold, sold to some restaurants. Me, I sell to uh, UFA, United Fish Auction. If it's New Year's time, I'll catch for giveaway and then sell it, sell some to, you know, pay the fuel and stuff, expenses. But other than that, it's just when we do projects with clay, we'll go. And then we we went a couple times just for go. But you used to go to South Point a yeah. lot, Michael. Back when, in the days, we used to, when, I used to bother fish a lot. When um, you um, uh, you know, bought your first yeah first rat, you know? I used to bother fish in the grounds nighttime and go South Point. A lot. We used a to lot. go a lot. If we'd go down South Point, Point. we'd go in the morning, fish night time, stay two nights, we'd catch 800 pounds at, at, at one day. So it'd be like 1,600 pounds for one trip, bottom fishing. But South Point, there's so much variables over there. It's like the wind, the current, the porpoise, the sharks, hard down there. You got to live down there to make money. We would. We'd launch a boat from Honokahau Harbor and drive down. So, hard to make money that way. The amount they catch depends on when and where they fish, and that has changed over time. For me, I think mostly when we go now, we go far. I mean, we go around Hilo and we go Maui. I think we catch way more now and bigger. I think just because all the old timers are all not fishing anymore, they're, they're either past or there's hardly any fishermen, you know, places where we go. Mike is passing along what he's learned to the next generation. For me, just my son. But then they're, they're not into it. I think kids nowadays are like a little bit lazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're not like the old days. Yeah, but my brother, he, he actually teaches a lot. Well, I have I mean, always crew, yeah. I always have crew, that's why. And he teaches a lot. I mean, he, he my brother, he treats his crew really well. And like, you know, I, I, I'm just proud of my brother because like, and he's willing to teach. He teaches everybody. While Mike fishes with a crew, Nathan fishes by himself. <laughs> no, I, you know, believe me, because I have a temper. <laughs> Everybody knows I have a temper. I fish, fish, I fish by myself my whole life. By myself. <laughs> Ask my brother, tell him I go, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, all my life I fish myself. So my back is kind of like, you know, not there anymore. So I, that's why I just went strictly bottom fishing. No eye. Cause I still do a lot of eye fishing too. You know, you know, I was the older brother and I was, you know, you know, I can be, you know, a little, you know, bossy. And then my brother, man, I love him so much, man. I don't even want him to deal with me. <laughs> I mean, it's the truth, though, right? I mean, it, it, it's, 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 yeah, yeah. We don't want to, like, you know. You know how it is when you run a business, right? You don't want family involved. Yeah. So we just kind of, it's like Sweto and his brother. Yeah. Sweto had a brother, right? Yeah. Sweto. They don't fish together, right? See? <laughs> I would say we both the same, though. He is. I don't go bottom fishing that much. I mostly go eye fishing. Yeah. We only go eye fishing. Long line and hand line. My so father used to do a lot of bottom fishing though. Nobody knew what he was doing because he sold it all to the block. And like, he was really good friends with that guy, you know, with Hari Gucci and um, Sweto, too. I mean, those you know, guys, they, they were, I know Sweto, he probably knows us when we were little kids yeah, fishing on the boat, yeah, right, Sweto? Yeah, yeah. We was this small. I mean, he was, he, he, I know him for years. <laughs> I, got, I got one more thing to say, though, okay? You know, fishing is so hard work. And to be a good fisherman, you need the passion. Because I've seen a lot of fishermen, like, you know, they would fish. And their passion would like, you know, you know, they just would, you know, lose the passion, so they would stop fishing. Because it's so hard work, you gotta yeah. like prepare for the night before. You, 
I mean, there's so much preparation. I sweat, right, sweat, though, you got to, like, get ready. And, like, day and night, and then, you know, then you got to sell the fish. That's another story, too. But that's why we always sold to the broker, because if, if, if you want to fish the next day, you got to sell to the broker. Yeah, you cannot paddle the fish yeah. if you want commercial fishing hard. Because then you can lose one or two, two days of fishing. Yeah. And fishing, for being a successful fisherman, you got to go every day. No more such things as birthday, Christmas, New Year's, whatever. We go every single day. But like guys like Sweto, or even my brother, when you, when you still get excited about fish, you know, catching one fish, or like, you know, you, you know your camaraderie with your crew is all oh, so it's all about fun that's that's when you know that's one true passionate fisherman and that they're going to be one one guy like Sweto going to last 80 80 years a lot of the fishermen i mean there's only a few of them that that are like that that going to last like Sweto, haru or you know they're going to give up like you know if their engines break down or they're going to sell their boat, but one, you need passion, man, to fish. So, uh, yeah, I think, I think a guy like Haru. It's crazy. To this day, he dream about fishing. Yeah. It's crazy. He wish he could go fishing, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A guy like Haru. Unbelievable. Can... Yeah.